For weather updates on the go, call our Delta World Tire Weather Phone at 504-500-2888. The Golden Apple Award is sponsored by Fidelity Bank. Here for good. Well, welcome back at 931. I'm Rob Krieger. And I'm Bruce Katz. The Perseverance Mars rover ups its photo game with Instagram with HD. Yeah, NASA reveals never before seen panoramic views of the surface of Mars. The rover has a pair of zoomable color cameras on board and so far Perseverance has transmitted 142 images of the area where it landed in Jezero Crater, an almost 4 billion year old dry lake bed. NASA stitched some of those images together to get that 360 degree view. Perseverance will spend two years roaming the crater, exploring and searching for signs of ancient life. That's amazing. You know, younger years you hear about Mars and you hear about, you know, what it would be like and now to actually see the real deal, that's amazing. Yeah, really cool to see it. It would be great once, you know, people are there walking around, colonizing Mars. You think so? Yeah. Skyscrapers and interstates and... One day. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> to the moon. All right. Well, earlier this week, we showed you a dramatic rescue of a dog that fell into an ice covered pool in Texas. Now check out another one this time in Tennessee, all caught on home surveillance. Now the video shows the dogs playing around a backyard pool, but one of the animals falls in and disappears beneath the ice. Homeowner Jenny Tatum, who had been on the back porch, immediately jumped into action. And within seconds, she's in the icy pool herself frantically trying to find the dog. Now at one point she gets out and runs around the edge trying to spot him, which she eventually does. She jumps back in the pool for a second time and is able to get him out. Her veterinarian neighbor told her to bring the dog to the hospital and said if it would have been just a matter of a few more seconds, the dog probably would not have survived. That's so hard to watch. Just terrifying to see, see her digging through that ice, trying to find where the dog is caught underneath. Oh, just it, it just hurts your heart. And there, there you there go. She, she found the dog. Yep. And, and, and wow. we were updated. Our, our producer, Christy, told us that the dog now is OK. Wow. So wow. and for her, too. I mean, that was dangerous for her. I'm sure she was too. running on full adrenaline. Oh, full adrenaline. You know? Absolutely. All right. Well, a year after the pandemic started to the grip of the to grip the United States, you know, some people and Karen and I were talking about this even last night. We're considering summer vacation plans. Yeah, the vaccine rollout and decrease in both COVID cases and deaths have people hoping for a semi-normal summer. Folks are cautiously optimistic, booking trips, paying for summer camps, and gearing up for a potentially normal season. While some experts warn spring may be too soon to expect normalcy, this cautious optimism for summer 2021 is soaring. The TSA recently announced plans to hire thousands of new agents to keep up with the potential increase in air travelers. Let's hope we can get back to some normalcy this summer. Yeah, I think you'll see a lot of people start uh, to book. Well, as you said, perfect wording, pent yeah. up demand. People just want to get up and at it. Exactly. All right, Zach Fordella, I'm looking at the satellite picture here. It looks like more clouds north than south right now. Yeah, it's almost like we sort of flipped it around here where we were foggy on the south shore. The north shore didn't have any fog early this morning, but now it's flipped around where the clouds and the fog are more so north of the lake and the south shore you're breaking out into full sun. You clearly see that visible satellite and you can notice the North Shore pretty socked in right now, but I do believe we're going to improve things as we go throughout the day today. Look at the city. Guys, earlier it was fully clouded over. We had fog, but now it's basically barely a few clouds in the sky. You can still see a hint of that hazy slash fog in the sky, but in general with us breaking out into that full sun, our temperatures are going to rocket today. Look at our temperatures now. We're almost near 70 degrees, so it's not going to take much. I think 76 might be borderline too low. We could very well be a little bit warmer than that as we go into this afternoon. Many spots I think are probably going to top out somewhere around 78. It all depends on that cloud cover. The good news, we're dry today. We're not going to have much wind, but the humidity will continue to creep back up on us. So you will notice how it's not as nice of a 70 degree weather as it was earlier in the week. When the humidity is low and you get 70s, it's beautiful. When the humidity is high and you get 70s, it feels a little icky out there. Look at our water vapor imagery because this tells a story of the weather pattern, not only now, really going the next several days, southwesterly flow aloft. That pauses any front from coming south. So the fronts are going to try, but they're going to stall to our north and that area that they stall, get ready. It's going to turn very wet. Look at this rain potential over the next seven days. Memphis, Shreveport, yes, that's about five inches of rain that could be possible in the mid-Mississippi Valley going through Tennessee and Arkansas. Something to keep in mind, remember, if it rains really heavy during the spring up north, that water has to come south in the Mississippi River, so that's something we might have to watch 
over the next several weeks. So here's that stalled front. It's just going to sit there the next two to three days. And here come the disturbances. Look at the rain just continuing to pour to our north. We're stuck in the warm and soupy air mass where our only concern will be one or two showers and the chance that maybe we get morning fog and then that fog slowly dissipates by the afternoon hours. Even in the Saturday, looking ahead to the weekend, still humid, still warm, lots of clouds, but not so much in the rain department. There you go, 20% token chance every single day. Maybe by next Monday and Tuesday, we could get a stronger front in here that might send us some better rain chances. So here's that seven day, and you see it this weekend, quite warm, upper 70s. I think we will hit 80 one day over the next four days. We do come down a little bit with that next front as we go into next week, so that's something to sort of keep in mind. You can always get that latest forecast from the Delta World Tire Fox 8 weather phone. Rob and Bruce. All right, thank you, thanks, Zach. Zach. Well, we've got some breaking news we want to mention. Jefferson Parish government tweeting out just moments ago that there is a, a power outage occurring east of the airport near Kenner. About 4,000 customers are affected, uh, Intergy customers affected right now, of course. Uh, we'll keep you posted uh, as, as we learn exactly what may have caused that outage. Um, any updates on that, of course, you can follow it on fox8live.com. All right, thanks, Rob. Well, an event this weekend will help raise money for those suffering after last week's freezing conditions across much of the country. Chris Jansen, Travis Tritt, and Haley Witters are among those taking part in the special Grand Ole Opry concert to gather donations for Feeding America, which supports food banks and food pantries across the U.S. You can watch this Saturday night at 8 o'clock on our digital channel Circle, then again right here on Fox 8 at 1030. Well, here at Fox 8, we honor educators who go above and beyond for their students. This week, we celebrate Nan Ryan, who teaches visually impaired students at Harahan Elementary School. Yep, as Kelsey Davis reports, she's not letting the pandemic's challenges get her students off track. There's two kind of math codes. What are they? Tell me about Miss Ryan. Is she one, of, she one of your favorite teachers? Um, yeah, because she ordered the Braille equipment and she ordered a lot of stuff so we can get better. Dennis Bowden is a fourth grader at Harahan Elementary School and one of Mrs. Nan Ryan's students. Now, why do you have this thing in front of you over here? What is that called? It's a number line. It's a number line. Why? Mrs. Ryan started teaching in the 1990s, her way of giving back after overcoming her own childhood learning struggles. I myself did not learn to read or write until I was in the third grade, and I didn't want children to have to go through basically what I had to go through. And recently, she started teaching students with visual impairments. That meant additional training for herself, whether it was professional development or offered by our district or seeking training on her own. She just made it happen. Mrs. Ryan's students are in kindergarten through sixth grade and have varying levels of visual impairments. That means each student has different learning needs. Foam. Foam. When the pandemic hit, Mrs. Ryan says it took her a minute to kick back into gear to ensure her students did not fall behind, academically or otherwise. Doing errands, answering the telephone. Uh, eventually, it will be able to walk on a sidewalk, safely cross the street. These are things that are not typically taught. With the help of the school and district administrators, she applied for a grant to get devices called Braille Trails for each child. And with that, they have the same access to the Internet sites, to uh, Google Classrooms, to Google Docs, to Google whatever, Excel spreadsheets. Principal Stephanie Scott says she admires Mrs. Ryan's passion to help the kids succeed. And for her to be able to design lessons for all of them and cater to the needs of all of them in different content areas with different abilities, I was quite impressed. <laughs> and her students, like Dennis, Sam, Sam, are grateful to have Mrs. Ryan in their corner. I just want to say that <clears throat> Thank you for the bro equipment because I can't wait to take it home. In Harahan, Kelsey Davis, Fox 8 Local First. How Good great story. is that, right? Yeah. You know, certainly helping those children out. No doubt. All right, well, more celebrities speak out about COVID-19. Plus, a new Spider-Man film is on its way. Christy Coleman has the latest, and who that making headlines? Hey, Christy. <laughs> hey, guys. Well, singer-actress Trisha Yearwood uh, tests positive for COVID-19. Now, her husband, singer Goth Brooks, however, tested negative. A written statement says the pair were already quarantining after finding out a member of their, their team tested positive for the virus. Brooks confirming the news himself. 
addressing his wife's condition, saying, quote, officially she's diagnosed as on her way out of the tunnel now, though which I'm extremely thankful for. In other news, actress Catherine McPhee and her husband welcome a new baby boy. Her husband, David Foster, is a Grammy and Emmy-winning musician. Her representative tells People the family is doing well. McPhee is known for starring in the musical TV show Smash. This is a couple's first child together. And Sony and Marvel announce a new Spider-Man film. Tom Holland will star in Spider-Man No Way Home when it hits movie theaters this December. Spider-Man released this short teaser here yesterday on Twitter. The film will be the third installment of the Holland-led franchise that has also included Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. Fans can swing into theaters December 17th when it hits the big screen. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Christy. Well, it's Severe Weather Awareness Week, and we want to help you prepare for any inclement conditions we could face this spring. We'll have what you need to know in Tracking the Science coming up. Estamos aquí para quedarnos. That ain't my mind. Ici pour de bon. No matter how you say it, here for good means we're local and committed to our uniquely diverse community. Because at Fidelity Bank, we know that local businesses drive our economy. We know the importance of giving back. And we know our clients. And they know us. Come celebrate the difference a community bank can make. Fidelity Bank, since 1908. Here for good. When Posigen Solar and Energy Efficiency opened their doors in 2011, their mission helped thousands of Louisiana homeowners see huge savings on their electric bills. 